our son was killed. Our son was killed, and there is nobody coming forward and, and holding anybody accountable. And it's just wrong, and it hurts so bad. Josiah Gallat was fatally stabbed in his dorm at the University of Toledo in 2012. It was a violent crime committed. His parents here, say what, the school mishandled his case from the very beginning. Also, if if a violent crime is successfully investigated and prosecuted, isn't that a, a bad statistic against the school? If it is, then it's a conflict of interest mm -hmm. for school, for campus police to cover it. University police say Gallat and his roommate, Eric Littleton, appeared to fight while under the influence of a hallucinogenic drug. The Lucas County coroner ruled the death a homicide. They should have immediately expelled Eric Littleton. Mm -hmm. Littleton was suspended, not expelled. But they the Gallat family didn't know that. No one necessarily would, as Toledo and other schools generally keep that information to themselves. Many schools don't even record disciplinary action on students' transcripts. If somebody does something serious enough, to be suspended or expelled from a college or university, it should be on the transcripts because that's very, very serious. Andrea Goldblum um, advises campuses on safety issues and is a former <laughs> conduct officer at Ohio State. She says school disciplinary sanctions vary across the board, likely because of differing philosophies. There's three things that always need to be weighed. The rights and needs of the accused or charged student, the rights and needs of a victim if there is one, and then the rights and needs of the university or college community. And it's a very fine balancing act because you don't want to keep somebody on campus who could be dangerous. On the other hand, you don't want to jump to conclusions or overreact. At Miami University, a student says the school didn't do enough to protect her from a dangerous student who she says raped her. He had these illegal videotapes of women who did not know that he was taping their sexual encounters. I think that the school is negligent because for what happened to me, because if they would have had dealt with what had happened in 2010 with the voyeurism case, I probably would not have been raped. Oxford police conducted a voyeurism investigation involving the same Miami student in 2009. The university says while campus police assisted Oxford with the investigation, school administration was not aware of the allegations at that time. Oxford police will never turn over investigatory material to the university. We only get when something is charged. So uh, my office, the student's office, would never have had any access or knowledge of it, which I had none. There was another allegation of rape against the same Miami student in 2008, but because the woman didn't want to press charges, the university says it took no further action. In 2011, a new report of rape compelled Miami to expel him. We only can act on information we have. Certainly, had we known more, we could have done more. Miami University does include disciplinary sanctions on students' transcripts. But this former Miami student enrolled as a freshman in Texas, so his past doesn't follow him. So I reached out to um, West Texas A&M through the president and got no response. Neither the report of rape at Miami or the death of a student at Toledo resulted in criminal prosecution. We didn't go to trial. Um, the prosecutors didn't feel that we had a cut and dry case. Schools still have the power to issue sanctions through their own disciplinary process. You can't hold the university to have the same, the exact same standard beyond a reasonable doubt. However, the university does have an obligation to provide that person who's accused with due process. Schools can't send students to jail, but they do hold their own private disciplinary hearings and have the power to make life-changing decisions. I think that people that hear the more serious cases um, anything involving physical assault, sexual assault, weapons, drug sales, those types of cases need to have a good grounding in how to have those processes fairly. Um, if it's a board, they need to be well trained. I think where schools get into trouble is when they're, they are not trained or not prepared.
Without a uniform system in place, schools control their own private justice systems. I hear horror stories, uh, not just since I've become Attorney General, but before that, uh, from people on both sides, frankly. People who are accused, parents uh, who, of someone who is accused, and they say it was not a, a due process. You know, we didn't have the right to appear, we didn't have the right to put on evidence, we didn't have the right to testify. They need to have a clear cut, this is how we are going to deal with this and we're going to educate the students because of this terrible scenarios that have happened. This needs to be a learning experience and a change in culture because right now it's like living in Sodom and Gomorrah.